All right, friends, neighbors, and Python enthusiasts. Today, we're going to fool around a little bit with some Python lines. Um, but we're going to do this with a twist. We're going to use ChatGPT and another uh, generative AI program. We're just going to use Bing Chat. And the goal today is to take a look at what code can be automatically generated and then maybe what we're missing about it. But it's important that we have the conversation about generative AI and programming. So let's try something really simple first. So this is ChatGPT. This is the interface. And so we're going to say a Python loop uh, with 10 uh, iterations. So we'll just do that. Nope. And then we'll submit it. So it didn't take it very long to uh, to spit out an answer, and we can see up here we've got the uh, the loop, and I suppose now if Python or if ChatGPT wrote the Python code for us, we could ask the question, why in the world do I need to learn Python when I could just generate this on my own? Well, there is the question of why I wanted the Python loop to run 10 times, why I wanted a looping structure at all. And so we kind of have to understand why in the world we wanted to have a for loop to begin with. But there are some other details underneath here. Let's take a look at a, a cleaner version of the Python code. And for that, I'm going to just put this, the code in, in idle. So here is the, the, well, it's the integrated development environment that comes with Python. It is called idle. And so I'm just going to say this. I'm going to say for i in range, oops, range 10, print i. Now, if you're not, you know, familiar with pro programming or you're just getting started, we might ask a couple of questions here. We might say, what in the world is i? Well, it doesn't have to be i. It's just a variable a value that we can use that assumes whatever value we're going through on the loop. I could just have easily have said for var in range 10 print var, right? It's just a, a variable name. But if we if we watch this thing run, we can see that there's something else that I might not have realized if I just did 10 and that is the way that Python counts, right? It's actually a range from 0 to 9. We also don't realize that there are other options that we might have in range. So for a lot of reasons, it's important for us to understand how in the world this loop came to be, why did we need it, and what is the actual operation of the, the loop, and is a for loop the best way to accomplish whatever task we're working on. Well, let's take a look at one other uh, generative AI tool that's out there. There are a lot of them. ChatGPT is probably just the most famous, but let's take a look at Bing. So here is Bing, and I can take a look at the Bing chat feature, and we'll make it a little bit bigger because we don't need all the news articles. All right. And we'll do the same thing. Python loop, and notice that I'm not even specifying that it's a for loop. So I could argue that I don't really know what kind of loop I actually need. There's while loops, there are if-then statements, there's all kinds of things. There's counters, um, and I'll say, and instead of saying 10 iterations, that runs 10, 10 times. So we'll just use a little different language and see what uh, Bing responds to. Now Bing is a little more handy if we actually, you know, did the, if we didn't uh, TLDR this, right, if we said, oh, we're actually going to read this, we would learn that it's 0 through 9, and, but it's not providing the code here. Now I could, I could 
provide more detail on what I wanted the loop to do. But there we have it. That's a simple for loop. And maybe a couple of things to think about before we go ahead and generate AI or use generative AI to, to build our code for us. Do we really understand the question that we're asking? Do we really understand if this is the correct way to go about this? All right, so let's do one more example. So for this example, I'm just going to ask ChatGPT to come up with a Python menu. And I'll specify that I want a command line so that we're not, uh, oops, I did it again. So this is spitting out a whole bunch of stuff here, but let's go back up to the menu. And so here we've created a menu, right? We're spitting out what we want the user to see, but do we understand what the def statement means? And then if we, if we come back down here a little bit, we can see that somewhere we've got to call the menu. And so this is a little more complicated choice. And when you, when you ask for more complicated answers, it's clear that we don't necessarily know or understand the code that's being spit out from the generative AI tool. We also might not be sure if this is going to run once or is going to be something repetitive that can come back over and over again so that the user can make more choices after that. Well, let's see what we might do in idle. So I'm going to take a little bit different approach. So in idle, I'm going to use another tool that we have. I'm going to use the while statement. So I'm going to say just while true. And I'm going to say menu with two choices. And we don't have to specify the whole you know, reason that we're doing this or anything else. We're just doing an example. So again, um, let's see, choice equals input. Make a choice. And then maybe we'll have a decision. Oops. All right. So I accidentally hit enter here. So let's try this again. And then we'll say, oh, I did it again. Say you chose one, and then we'll say, I don't know. okay, so we can see that I've taken a different tack on the whole problem of a menu. And so, right there, if we just asked ChatGPT or Bing to do the same thing, then we don't know why it made the choices that it did. I don't know the application here. And then there's a whole bunch of syntax that's in here, right? We've got the print statements, but let's start with this one right here, while true. What in the world does that mean? And when ChatGPT originally made the call, right? So we got this main program down here that says, well, they're calling this, this, uh, function and then we've got another function that's in here and yet another function. So how does this program actually operate? There's yet another way that we might have done this had uh, we done something like recursion or something of that sort. So the reasons that we build a particular looping structure or in this case uh, the while true statement is an infinite loop. So we have to have an exit sequence or a break of some kind. 
So let's go ahead and run this now. Now if I choose one, you can see that it runs again. And right here I've got this decision, right? But I entered one. Was it an integer? Was it a string? It turns out that the argument that I'm asking for, this input line, is actually going to be a string. But if I choose something else, and I could choose anything, then it breaks out of this. And so is this the right way to get out? Should we do something like blocking a function call or something of that sort? So again, you're using generative AI to make some choices here. And we have to understand the choices that the chat GPT, or Bing in this case, is going to make. And then there's the right question to ask ChatGPT or Bing. Let's try uh, Bing and see what it does. So here we have Bing and we're going to say uh, Python menu with choices. Now while we're waiting for it to come back we realize that in the case of ChatGPT, it ran once through, but that doesn't give you an opportunity to make a choice and then have the menu pop back up again. You would have to call the menu again. Ah, let's see what, Chat, uh, what Bing has done. Bing has chosen the same structure that I used, and in this case, it looks like uh, Bing is using a dictionary. So, We've got a couple of things that are, are different. Now this syntax is perhaps a little more complex. There's the break statement. But in this case, we've got choice being recast as an integer. So the point in all this is that I think it's OK to use generative AI, tools like ChatGPT or Bing, to help you come up with the right code. But of course, you had to figure out the right question to ask, and then you had to try to understand the code that was generated. I also think that it's important to state whether or not you use generative AI in your program. So these are things to think about when we're dealing with, in this case, Python and generative AI programs like ChatGPT and the Bing Chat. Well, I think that'll do it for now. See you next time.